Uh, so one, one of the questions that uh, was sent in uh, is uh, that uh, have there been any fatalities as a result of having to reconfigure and people being moved around and, uh, and at, being sent, the moment, sent to different hospitals? At, at the moment the reconfiguration hasn't started um, but certainly um, there have been no fatalities thus far and I, and I know one of the things people are worried about is journey times. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the stomach for it um, I recommend you visit the Healthcare for London for web website um, hfl.nhs.uk. We'll try and provide a link to that. <laughs> yeah. um, and, it, and one of the things we've done on that website is we've done um, four uh, cab cams of ambulance journeys and there is one of an ambulance taking a stroke victim from Biggin Hill to King's College Hospital um, and you are in the front of the cab and you see the ambulance going on the wrong side of the road, the wrong way round roundabouts, through red traffic lights Ambulances cut through congestion like a warm knife through butter. Um, and, and I think it, once you see that, people will be reassured that even at the peak of the rush hour, and in fact it's a, a, another statistic which I might share with you, the difference in ambulance journey times from at, at any given point A to B between uh, middle of the afternoon and middle of the rush hour is three and a half minutes. The rush hour adds very, very little extra time to an ambulance journey because ambulances don't stop for traffic jams.